John Margolis, a question for Senator Benson. Senator, we've all just finished, uh, most America has just finished one of the hottest summers it can remember, and apparently this year will be the fifth out of the last nine that are among the hottest on record. No one knows, but most scientists think that uh, something we're doing, human beings are doing, are exacerbating this problem, and that this could, in a couple of generations, threaten our descendants' comfort and health, and perhaps even their existence. As Vice President, what would you urge our government to do to deal with this problem? And specifically as a Texan, could you support a substantial reduction in the use of fossil fuels which might be necessary down the road? Well, I think what you can do in that one, and which would be very helpful, is to use a lot more natural gas, which burns a lot cleaner. But the greenhouse effect is one that has to be a threat to all of us. And we have to look for alternative sources of fuel. And I've supported that very strongly. Now, the greenhouse effect is an important environmental issue. It is important for us to get the data in, to see what alternatives we might have to the fossil fuels, and make sure that we know what we're doing. And there are some explorations and things that we can consider in this area. The drought highlighted the problem that we have. And therefore, we need to get on with it. And in a George Bush administration, you can bet that we will. We cannot stick our heads in the sand and pretend that we don't face a global environmental crisis. Nor should we assume that it's going to cost jobs. Quite the contrary. We are going to be able to create jobs as Japan and Germany are planning to do right now if we have the guts to lead. In fact, the vast majority of the world scientists, and they have worked on this extensively, believe that we must have an effort to face up to the problems we face uh, with the environment. And if we just stick our heads in the sand and pretend that it's not real, we're not doing ourselves a favor. Even worse than that, we're telling our children and all future generations that we weren't willing to face up to this obligation. How can I, I believe that we have a mandate sure. to try to solve this problem, particularly when we can do it while we create jobs in the process. President Bill Clinton will protect our environment and prevent the kind of attacks on it that we saw in the last Congress and that are included in the Republican platform. And so will Bob Dole. I mean, Al, get real. Franklin Roosevelt said in 1932 that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. The only thing, Jim, they have to offer is fear. Fear of the environment, fear of the climate, fear of uh, uh, Medicare, fear of uh, Newt, fear of Republicans, fear of Bob, and probably fear of cutting tax rates. They ain't seen nothing yet. Vice President Gore on the environment. In your 1992 book, you said, quote, we must make the rescue of our environment the central organizing principle for civilization, and there must be a wrenching transformation to save the planet. Do you still feel that way? I do. I think that in this 21st century, we will soon uh, uh, see the consequences of uh, what's called global warming. Uh, there was a study just uh, a few weeks ago suggesting that in summertime, the North Polar ice cap would be completely gone in 50 years. Already, many people see the strange weather conditions that uh, the old timers say they've never seen before in their lifetimes. Uh, and what's happening is the, the level of pollution is I increasing significantly. I think that holding on to the old ways and the old argument that the environment and the economy are in conflict uh, is, is really outdated. We have to be bold. We have to provide leadership. Now, it's true that we disagree on this. Governor said that he doesn't think this problem is necessarily caused by people. What about global warming? I think it's an issue that we need to take very seriously, but I don't think we know the solution to global warming yet, and I don't think we've got all the facts before we make decisions. I disagree that we don't know the, the cause of global warming. I, I, I think that we do. It's pollution, uh, carbon dioxide and other uh, chemicals that are even more potent, uh, but in smaller quantities, that, that, that cause this. Look, the world's temperature is going up, weather patterns are changing, storms are getting more violent and unpredictable, and uh, what are we going to tell our children? And I'm a grandfather now. Uh, I, I want to be able to tell my grandson 
uh, when I'm in, in my later years, that I didn't turn away from, from the evidence that showed that we were, we were doing some serious harm. In, in, my, in my faith tradition, uh, it, it is, it's written in uh, the book of Matthew, where, where your heart is, there is your treasure also. And I, I believe that, that uh, we ought to, to recognize the value to our children and grandchildren of taking steps that preserve the environment in a way that's good for them. I, um, of course there's a lot of, I mean, look, global warming needs to be taken very seriously. And I take it seriously. But science, there's a lot of, there's differing opinions. And before we react, I think it's best to have the full accounting, full understanding of what's taking place. Mr. President, how would you rate yourself as an environmentalist? What specifically has your administration done to improve the condition of our nation's air and water supply? I'm a big proponent of clean coal technology to make sure we can use coal, but in a clean way. I guess you'd say uh, uh, I'm a good steward of the land. They pulled out of the global warming, declared it dead, didn't even accept the science. I'm going to be a president who believes in science. Governor, I'm happy to talk to you in this next section about energy issues. Let's talk about climate change. What is true and what is false about what we have heard, read, discussed, debated about the causes of climate change? Yeah. Well, as the nation's only Arctic state and being the governor of that state, Alaska feels and sees impacts of climate change more so than any other state. And we know that it's real. I'm not one to attribute every man uh, activity of man to the changes in the climate. There is something to be said also for man's activities, but also for the cyclical temperature changes on our planet. But there are real changes going on in our climate. And I don't want to argue about the causes. So even in dealing with climate change, it's all the more reason that we have an all of the above approach, tapping into alternative sources of energy and conserving fuel, conserving our petroleum project products and our hydrocarbons so that we can clean up this planet and deal with climate change. Senator, what is true and what is false about the causes? Well, I think it is man-made. I think it's clearly man-made. And look, this probably explains the biggest fundamental difference between John McCain and Barack Obama and Sarah Palin and Joe Biden, Governor Palin and Joe Biden. If you don't understand what the cause is, it's virtually impossible to come up with a solution. We know what the cause is. The cause is man-made. That's the cause. That's why the polar ice cap is melting. I just want to ask you, do you support car capping carbon emissions? Uh, I do. I do. Okay. But here's the bottom line, Gwen. How do we deal with global warming with continued addition to carbon emissions? Senator McCain, I want to know, um, we saw that Congress moved pretty fast in the face of an economic crisis. I want to know what you would do within the first two years to make sure that Congress moves fast as far as environmental issues like climate change and green jobs. That we may hand our children and our grandchildren a damaged planet. I have disagreed strongly with the Bush administration on this issue. I traveled all over the world looking at the effects of greenhouse gas emissions. Joe Lieberman and I, and I introduced the first legislation, and we forced votes on it. That's the good news, my friends. The bad news is we lost. But we kept the debate going, and we kept this issue to, to posing to Americans the danger that climate change opposes. Now, how, what's, what's the best way of fixing it? Nuclear power. This is one of the biggest challenges of our times. Uh, and it is absolutely critical that we understand this is not just a challenge, it's an opportunity. So it's easy to talk about this stuff during a campaign, but it's important for us to under understand that it requires a sustained effort from the next president. And we're not going to be able to deal with the climate crisis if our only solution is to use more fossil fuels that create global warming. 